In the early 2000s, the Super Audio CD, or SACD, was poised to revolutionize the way we listen to music. But just as quickly as it emerged, the SACD faded away into oblivion. What happened? Why did it fail to take off? And more importantly, is it worth collecting today? In this video, we'll explore the rise and fall of the SACD, taking a deep dive into its technology, its marketing, and its reception by audiophiles and the music industry. By the end of this video, you'll have a complete understanding of what the SACD was all about and whether or not it's a format worth investing in today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is your sanctuary of sound, a place where we explore all things hi-fi, DIY, and how-tos to help you navigate the amazing world of audio. Our subscribers are fellow audio enthusiasts who are passionate about building a community around the world of hi-fi without all the marketing fluff and puff pieces. So if you're looking to deepen your knowledge and connect with like-minded individuals, then you've come to the right place. Let's get started. Hey guys, real quick before I begin, this is actually the first video I'm filming. I actually still am positive for, uh, you know, I've been, you know, super sick the past week. That's why my voice is a little weird. So I don't want you to think, once again, I messed up the brand new beautiful microphone I just got. I, I am legitimately sick and that's why my voice is the way it is. And I'm, I, I really wanted to put out some content. I'm honestly not feeling too good. So I hope you guys can bear through this and it's some really cool information in here about SACDs. I'm really, you know, excited about bringing you this type of content. So that's why I'm just sacrificing myself and just giving it to you raw and letting you know, hey, I I got the I got the Rona and uh, I'm trying to feel better. But for now, you know, let's just let's 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 tackle this SACD situation. So why did the SACD fail? The easy answer is just bad timing. The SACD was released in 1999, which was when the age of piracy first made its major appearance as Napster also released their platform in the same year. Now, the conundrum in all of this is that Sony finally releases a better quality version of the CD, being able to potentially take the quality of physical media to new heights and serving the audio community with the highest resolution of its time and you people chose to rally behind 128 kilobytes per second MP3 quality because you were able to squander it for free from Napster, LimeWire, and Torrents. How dare you? So when I sit here wondering to myself, why the Redbook CD is the best option we have today for physical media next to the vinyl record, it's because the majority of consumers wanted their free lunch. It's like those scenes you always see in movies where someone throws a bunch of money out of the window onto a busy street and everyone pounces at the chance for some of the spoils. I can't blame it all on timing because the SACD was also plagued with other issues like cost, compatibility, lack of marketing, and just, just limited availability in general. Had Sony just bypassed the mini disc, just, just scrapped it all together and worked on the SACD to supersede the Redbook CD, and had they released it in the early 90s to replace the traditional CD altogether, I feel more people would have gravitated to the format, including the music labels. The initial launch of the SACD didn't make much sense. An average SACD went for $40 in 1999, which is the equivalent in purchasing power to about $63.69 in 2023 dollars adjusted for inflation. That is just ridiculously expensive. Let's not forget about the players themselves. The SACD needed a special player to play these new discs. In the US and Europe, the first SACD players were priced at a premium compared to standard CD players. The Sony SCD-1 was priced at $5,000 in the US when it was introduced in 1999, which is almost $8,000 by today's standards, taking you know inflation into account. No wonder this flopped. The only people that could afford this or would have bought these components and discs when they launched were the wealthy audiophiles looking for the next best thing, new toy. This wasn't meant for the mass consumer and to be honest, I still feel the same way since the format never really peaked evolved or became easily attainable. The lack of marketing made it difficult for the format to gain wider visibility and acceptance. It's like Sony knew deep down that this was a niche market or they defaulted to that mindset after the SACD fell on its face in 1999. 
Some music labels didn't even bother releasing their catalog on SACD. The format was not widely adopted by all major music labels, making this a huge issue for people who actually wanted to replace their library with this fresh new format. Now, the one really good thing about the SACD is that it uses DSD, which is direct stream digital technology to encode the audio. In other words, SACD discs contain audio that has been recorded using the DSD method of digital sampling, which is a bit different than its close cousin PCM. PCM encompasses the majority of digital recordings, including you know, Redbook CD, Wave, FLAC, etc. and so forth. DSD takes a different approach though, which allows for the recording to be able to have a little bit more detail and accuracy if it actually exists within the original recording. In English, it's probably the highest quality type of digital file available today. Some DACs can read it, some can't, and that's something you should consider when purchasing a DAC, if you're gonna be using this format. I recently released a video on how to rip your SACD to your PC, extracting those valuable DSD files from the disks so you can stream them to compatible devices. The video actually got a really good reception, which is why I wanted to follow it up with this video to fully explain you know, how I feel about SACD and where it stands today. Now, let's talk about the actual SACD players for a second. It's funny because I did a video about about the Lingdorf CD2, a CD player which retails for around $3,000, and people were just losing their minds. Why doesn't it have an SACD at that price? You know, They were just freaking out because this thing didn't have an SACD option. Well, folks, that's because the average SACD player starts at around $4,000 and goes up from there, unless you go used or get lucky and find a Blu-ray player that can read it. I have one. It's an older Sony carousel I found at the charity shop for under $10 because they thought it was broken. I love it. I love it when people think things are broken. One man's trash is another man's treasure, believe me. <laughs> Overall, I do feel the sound quality is very nice with SACDs. Do I think it's far superior to a Redbook CD? Not really, you know, it's a bit louder and a little bit cleaner, but overall I think if you are just listening to music and I play you one track from a Redbook CD and another from an SACD and you didn't know I was doing uh, switching things up, you may not even notice the difference. Since the SACD came out during the era of the 5.1 home theater in a box, it also has a special feature on the disc where it allows for multi-channel playback. An SACD can contain up to six channels of audio as opposed to the two channels from Redbook CDs. The six channels on an SACD disc are typically used for 5.1 surround sound setup, which includes three front channels, left, center, right, two rear channels, left surround, right surround, and a subwoofer channel for low frequency sounds. However, not many artists recorded their music this way. While there are some notable SACD releases, including titles from Pink Floyd, The Rolling Stones, and The Beatles, who are just legends, these are relatively rare though. Will the SACD make this triumphant return to the ring and come out winning? Sadly, no. You know, there just isn't enough of a market. There just isn't enough recording artists recording in this format. And sadly, people are already too busy spending their laundry money on collecting one format that shouldn't have made it out of the 70s. <laughs> totally kidding, guys. Calm down. Totally kidding. <laughs> I actually am starting to warm up to vinyl a tad bit. I just don't have the scratch to go all balls out investing like some of you do. However, if you want to dabble in the world of SACDs, you can check out Mobile Fidelity's online shop. I heard they are actually really good at remastering original albums into DSD. So good. Aside <laughs> Aside from all of that, I think that just about covers it. If you want to chat more about SACDs and your experiences with them, head on down to the comments section or to my Discord channel and we can connect there. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to smash the like button as hard as you can, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to get notified as soon as I put out the next piece of content, which I hope I feel better and do really, really soon. With all that said and done, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for sticking it through with me. I know I'm, I'm sick and nasally and I just I suck right now, but I, I actually, you know, I was excited to do this video because SACDs are a special piece of history here. So I was really happy to, you know, research the topic and give you my opinion. And uh, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon.